Coming up, an army vet pays it forward in the most adorable way. There's just so much about him that is so perfect for this little mission of his. Then, we meet a man on a mission. How much is lost when one of them dies without sharing their story? Plus, we learn about a World War II veteran sending a message from coast to coast. We want people to know what, you want to, what the war was all about and what, what it took to win it. And how a widow was finally able to honor her fallen husband. How can I not be grateful and hold these people very dear? All of that and more on this special Veterans Day edition of On the Road. Hello, I'm Steve Hartman. Thanks for joining us for our CBS News streaming series, where every month or so, we revisit some of my favorite stories from my 25 years on the road. We commemorate Veterans Day every year on November 11th. It's a day to honor the heroes who served to protect our country. So for the next half hour, we're going to feature stories about veterans. Up first, how an Army vet service dog saved her life and powered her to give back. It takes real tenacity to make it on the U.S. women's sled hockey team. But what sets 36-year-old Christy Gardner apart and what brought us here to Lewiston, Maine, isn't her doggedness. It's her dog. Let's go. This is Moxie, Christy's service dog and her hero. She's absolutely been a lifesaver. You mean that literally? Quite literally. That dog saved my life. There you go, kiddo. Christy, an army vet lost both her legs after an attack overseas. Good girl. She got Moxie to help with daily tasks. But more importantly, during her darkest days, Christy says her golden retriever was the only thing that stopped her from ending her own life. The way she would just look at you, her eyes would go right through to your soul. And I felt like I was disappointing her. And so having her by my side was the only reason I didn't kill myself. Christy is now much better but she has felt indebted to her dog ever since. I feel like she deserves so much more. Unfortunately, there is no good way to repay a debt to a dog. You're my best buddy. Especially not the magnitude of debt Christy feels she owes Moxie. Which is why, instead of paying it back, she has come up with the sweetest plan to pay it forward. Meet Tiny Tim. He's not just any puppy. He's a puppy like her. Go back to class. Christy has taken Tim and his bum wing under her wing and is now training the pup to be a therapy dog. They're working on manners. Ideally, she'd like him to work full time here at Leeds Elementary, helping kids who feel broken. There's just so much about him that is so perfect for this little mission of his. I think the kids are going to say, well, he had all these problems and he didn't give up and look how happy he is. But before Tim can be a certified therapy dog, so soft. he needs a surgery to amputate his bad leg. Christy had been working multiple jobs to pay for that until this assembly. A check for $10,000 to pay for all of Tiny Tim's medical expenses. Vetra Science, a pet food supplement company, made the donation, delighting both trainer and trainee. Okay, okay. Looks like that debt has been repaid in full. Moxie saves you. You save Tiny Tim. And now Tiny Tim's going to save the town. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Very cool, but also exhausting. Unfortunately, Moxie passed away last March at the age of 13. But here's some good news. Tiny Tim's surgery was a success, and today he can keep up with pretty much any other dog. Also, Christy now runs a nonprofit called Mission Working Dogs, where she trains pups to help people with disabilities. Now onto a story about a group of Vietnam War veterans who found a way to honor their fallen friend 50 years after his passing. Let's take a look. At a cemetery in Chester, Illinois, Perry Dodson is late for a funeral. 50 years late for the funeral of Army Private First Class Leonard Nietzsche. Lieutenant Dodson was Leonard's platoon leader in Vietnam when in April 1970, their group was attacked and Leonard was killed. They loaded his body on a helicopter like this one, and immediately the platoon went back to war. And that was the extent of our grieving. And it just hit me one day, I woke up and I thought I never had a chance to say thank you. Maybe I just needed some finality. 
When Perry mentioned this pilgrimage to some of the other guys in his platoon, he found out something he hadn't considered before, that he wasn't alone, that there were others who felt the exact same way. So, they came too. Tim Rowland flew in from McAllen, Texas. Ernie Levesque drove out from Springfield, Massachusetts. And Glenn Fox came here from Newport, Nebraska. How you doing? On arrival, they met Leonard's sister, Linda, at the cemetery. So glad you guys are here. Yeah, we are too. Everyone gathered to pay their respects to Leonard. That's why this is so important to us today. Come on in. Because we never got to do this. What had happened? But like a lot of Vietnam vets especially, they find it hard to mourn the loss of a fellow soldier without also mourning their own survival. My job was to bring Leonard home. And I didn't do that. He gave something I didn't have to. And I wonder every day why. The guilt is relentless. Every day. Which is another reason they're here. I'm hoping it helps me. I think it will. Now I would like to introduce... After the cemetery, Leonard's family and friends held a reception. About a hundred people showed up, offering gentle hugs and hearty handshakes for Leonard's army buddies. Really a pleasure to meet you. Their message clear. God bless you. His death was not your fault. Thank you for Thank your you. service. And we're glad you survived. So happy. Have any other... Grieving a loss can be delayed, but it cannot be denied. He knows people, we're thinking about him. Yes, he does. People have to feel the pain, share it with others, and then tuck it in a pocket to carry with them forever. <sighs> That's real closure. Not forgetting, but rather finding peace in remembering. It's been close to 50 years, but glad to meet you. True heroes. Coming up after a break, we meet a 90-year-old World War II veteran attempting the seemingly impossible. Stay with us. Welcome back. For most 90-year-olds, an ideal retirement might be a Wheel of Fortune marathon or rousing shuffleboard tournament. But for the nonagenarian you're about to meet, he had a bigger dream. Take a look. Three days a week, 90-year-old Ernie Andrus puts on his support stockings and tennis shoes, gently lowers himself out of the RV he's been living in since October, and slowly returns to his mission. The older I get, the slower I go. To become the oldest person in America to run across America. I'm running the whole thing, every step of the way. He began eight months ago near San Diego. He's now about 100 miles east of Phoenix. Ernie obviously loves running, if you can call this that. But the World War II vet says there's another, much greater purpose here. You want people to know what, you want to, what the war was all about and what, what it took to win it. Specifically, this old Navy man is running to raise awareness for one of the unsung heroes of the war, a ship he served on called an LST. It stands for Landing Ship Tank, and it's how the Allies got heavy equipment onto beaches. The U.S. built more than a thousand LSTs during the war, but today, only one remains in its original configuration. It's parked here on the Ohio River in Evansville, Indiana. And Ernie says if he can run across the country at 90, the least you can do is drive to Indiana to see the thing. This shouldn't be forgotten. Eisenhower and Churchill both made a similar remark that it's the ship that won the war. Won the war? Yeah. Without them, how could you, you taken all those islands, how could you even took Normandy? Which is why, 70 years later, Ernie Andrus is out here returning the favor. Out here pretty much by himself. He runs five miles, gets a ride or hitchhikes back to his vehicle, and then runs another five miles two days later. He's hoping to reach the Atlantic by his 94th birthday. If you fail, you're a crazy old man. If you don't, if you succeed, you're a hero. And given that he already helped liberate the world, my money's on hero. Again. After that story first aired, Ernie made a new goal. To run back the other way, from East Coast all the way back to the West. He started that run in 2019 and made it clear to Texas. 
Unfortunately, while there, he suffered an injury. So now he's got a friend running for him. And that guy plans to reach the finish line in San Diego next August, just in time for Ernie's 100th birthday. When they're out there in California, they could visit the subject of our next story. A young man from LA who honors veterans in a really wonderful way. 20-year-old Rishi Sharma has always been into superheroes, the real kind. That's why, as a junior in high school, he made it his mission to meet as many World War II combat veterans as possible. I ditched so many days of high school to go do an interview. You were skipping school to go interview vets? Yeah. I started riding my bike to the local senior home. I interviewed those guys. Then I started driving. It became a daily undertaking. Every single day. When we first met Rishi in 2016, he was driving all over Southern California. I had a lot of missions. Interviewing guys like Marine Tank Commander Ernie Isley. They were going to make a big camp there and attack us at night. <laughs> Rishi talks to the men for hours. Wow. Then gives the recordings to their families. He says he does it because time is short. We're losing about 400 World War II vets every day. It's amazing how much history and knowledge is encased in each one of these individuals and how much is lost when one of them dies without sharing their story. The fact is, I wake up every day to obituaries, guys who I wanted to interview, and I have to find out that, you know, they died. At this point, I should tell you, Rishi doesn't come from a military family. His parents immigrated here from India. And yet, he cares as much about our greatest generation as any young man I've ever met. My name is Rishi Sharma. In addition to his in-person interviews, he was telephoning at least five World War II vets a day just to thank them for their service and sacrifice. It means a great deal to me that you were willing to endure all of that so that I could be here today. Well, thank you very much. After this story first aired, Rishi raised enough money on GoFundMe to expand his mission across the country. He travels by car, often sleeps in it. So far, he has interviewed over 850 vets in 40 states, learning about their stories and their scars. Bullet wound. Those that have healed and those that will never. Who is that? This is my brother Jack, and he died in my arms on, on the battlefield. Nice to know, as long as there are World War II veterans willing to talk, there will be at least one young man oh, shucks. willing to listen. Rishi has now interviewed more than 1,700 veterans in 49 states. To watch his interviews and learn more about his nonprofit, check out his website. It's rememberww2.org. That's rememberww2.org. After the break, the incredible story behind a nationwide treasure hunt and the unbelievable result. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We hope you're enjoying our Veterans Day special. This next story is one of my absolute favorites. It's about a gold star kid and a long lost link to his father. Take a look. Whoa. Even in Texas, a horse only gets you so far, which is why 15 year old Justin Rozier has been thinking lately about a car. Specifically, he told his mom, Jessica, he would love to have a car, any car, that his dad once owned. Whoa. I mean, it could have been a 1974 Dodge Astro. I don't even know if that's a car, but he, it could have been anything, and he would have said yes. Why? I know that he wishes his dad was here. In 2003, Justin's dad, Army First Lieutenant Jonathan Rozier, died in Iraq. Justin was nine months old. Today, he cherishes anything that used to belong to his dad, which is why he thought it would be so cool to have his car. I don't know, like just knowing that, it that he had it, it's a whole lot different than just any other thing, really. Unfortunately, yeah. after John died, Jessica had to sell the car, a 99 Toyota Celica convertible like this one. Finding it again would be nearly impossible, but Jessica said she had to at least try. So I feel like this is something that would, would connect him. But this is a needle in a haystack. 
Well, I've seen magical things happen on Facebook. So she turned to Facebook, posted the old VIN number with a note asking for help. And somehow that message made it all the way to Pleasant Grove, Utah, where local residents not only found the car. We decided, you know, let's, let's see if we can buy the car. This is Kyle Fox. And I'm not saying so I'm he's a saint, to but... Like that, to serve and, um, and that butterfly <laughs> stayed there for half an hour. <laughs> no, I don't even know where I was in that. <laughs> anyway, Kyle, who runs a nonprofit called Follow the Flag, got donations to purchase the car and then assembled a team of volunteer mechanics to fix it like new. All of this unbeknownst to Justin until this very moment. Last month, Kyle drove the car from Utah to surprise Justin for his 15th birthday. Go see it. I can't tell you what this meant to Justin. I mean, I really can't. He tried to explain it to me, but when he opened his mouth, no words fell out. It's a link to the past for him. Yeah. It's a big thing for me, too. I never got to see him come home. So that just one moment right there was... I think I needed that. <laughs> Obviously, this was never about a car. No, this was about trying to push past what you can't forget. Trying to remember what you never knew. All with the help of a country so grateful and kind, you can't imagine. I'm so glad we could do this for you. And now on to our final segment. This might be one of the most powerful stories I've ever covered. It exemplifies courage, bravery, and most importantly, unconditional love. It's now been 67 years since the liberation of France, but at today's D-Day ceremony in Normandy, there was one woman who's still in mourning. In fact, until recently, Peggy Harris of Vernon, Texas, didn't even know her husband Billy was buried here, and certainly didn't know the story I'm about to tell you. Billy was a fighter pilot, shot down and killed in July of 44 over Nazi-occupied northern France. But because of a series of snafus, miscues, and miscommunications, that information never got to his wife. As far as she knew, Billy was just missing. How many years did you wait? All my life. Peggy never remarried, never moved on, and might never have known the whole story if a relative hadn't looked into his military records a few years ago. The surprise wasn't that he died. Peggy had come to assume that. It was what came after. Here in the tiny Normandy town of Levant, the main road is actually called Place Billy D. Harris. It's the same road the townspeople have been marching down three times a year for the past 60 years, in part to commemorate his sacrifice. How much does Billy mean to them? Just listen to the mayor's voice when she gets to reading his name on the monument. That's how much. Hello, Peggy. And by extension, that admiration now goes to his wife. So happy to see you again. <laughs> Since learning her husband crashed near here, Peggy has been making an annual pilgrimage. She visits the nearby woods where the plane went down, escorted by 91-year-old Guy Serlo, the only witness still living. Guy said Billy was able to maintain control of the plane, despite his condition, and avoid the village. A hero in death. At first, they buried Billy in their local cemetery, covering his grave with flowers knee-deep. Even after his body was moved to the American cemetery at Normandy, the town continued to take flowers to his grave. How can I not be grateful and hold these people very dear? The people of Levant say they just wish they could have done more. If only I was able to help, Guy said, to which Peggy responded, you did. I like to think that he was still conscious enough to know that a friend stood by. <laughs> and that this man was that friend. <laughs> Her gratitude is matched only by theirs. In Levant, 
the American sacrifice is still very much treasured and honored. So we, we don't forget. They don't forget. And now that we know the story, they don't forget. Neither will we. <laughs> So that concludes our special. To all veterans watching, thank you for your service. And for brand new On the Road stories, don't forget to tune into the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell every Friday. Until then, I'm Steve Hartman. Mm -hmm.